Hi there, my name is Mike, I'm from Goliath. We're a device management cloud and we're built on top of Zephyr. Zephyr is a open source real-time operating system that's uh, managed by the Linux Foundation. We make it really easy for you to connect your Internet of Things devices and make sure that they're secure by default. So each device is gonna have an encrypted uh, channel back to the Goliath servers. Uh, this demo that we have right here, if you imagine like a greenhouse that's using both natural sunlight and augmented light, you want to be as efficient as possible, so we have a light sensor here that's going to measure and try to hit an exact target. If it gets cloudy outside, our cloud will tell the, uh, the light to get turned on and uh, make it more efficient to uh, hit your yields and your harvesting deadlines on time. Uh, of course, this is using uh, Wi-Fi and Ethernet. These might not be the best uh, technologies in your greenhouse situation, but we have another demo here that's based on open thread. If you think about like uh, Bluetooth as a radio technology, this is similar, but it's actually the thread is the radio technology. All of these devices connect to each other. They make a uh, mesh network, and it's self-organizing, self-healing, so if nodes are added to or missing from it, you'll see them. And uh, there's an accelerometer in here, so I can press a button, and you'll see the accelerometer got a change. This is actually going from the device through what's called a border router. So the border router itself has an internet connection. It goes up to the Goliath servers, the data gets stored there, and then we see on our visualization platform it come here. Uh, really the future is all about connecting more and more devices. We make it easy to manage those large fleets of devices, including the ability to update the uh, firmware that's running on them. So if you have a security vulnerability or you need a feature or anything like that, Goliath manages a, a way to upload your new compiled firmware, have it uh, download to the device, it'll check the signature to make sure that it is, uh, it is what's expected and who it's from, and uh, you'll have the, all the features that you were looking for. So how big is uh, Goliath? Uh, there's 10 people working Goliath right now. We're about a two-year-old startup, and uh, we find that we're a translation layer between the people that are doing low-level embedded and the cloud teams. And we, uh, since we're built on top of Zephyr, we're hardware agnostic, so anyone that's doing embedded engineering can build with Goliath. And uh, where are you based? We're actually all remote, uh, remote first. And so we have members in the US, in Brazil, in Poland. Um, so, yeah, we work all over the place. And how is it to work in the Zephyr ecosystem? Uh, I think that there is a learning curve. So if you're first starting, just know there's going to be a little bit of effort to see how things are done. But once you get going, it's really easy. For I instance... Uh, talk about the, the last piece of the demo, too. Yeah, um, oh, I don't have any battery e on mine. Right oh, I got mine here. Yeah. So this is, uh, this is a e-ink display. So um, currently it, needs, it just turned on. Uh, it needs to get connected to the Wi-Fi network that's hooked underneath the... Uh, oh, is it on? Yeah. It's a demo thing. Yeah, de demo things. culture, yeah. Yeah, there it goes. Okay, so now basically it's going to update with my uh, with my personal information first, company logo, my my title, of course. Got some, some blinky lights here. But basically this is also a Zephyr-based device running with an ESP32 S2 on the back, talking through a Wi-Fi device that's underneath the desk, and it's talking up to the Goliath servers, and it's listening for all the data, much like the dashboard that Mike showed. And so currently, uh, it's just showing this uh, single view. We can also do a uh, look at the data coming off the blue demo. So Mike wrote some code to re, re, um, redraw the screen and get the live uh, data that's showing off the blue demo. Did you explain the blue demo or no? Um, the blue demo is just temperature, pressure, humidity sensor. Uh, so we're getting that coming off. If we look at the green demo, the, the greenhouse demo that we were showing before, you can see the live light intensity value. The microphone Oh, yeah. Talking to the mic. mic. Uh, you can see the live light intensity value, the target value that it's looking for, and then the brightness of the lamp between 0 and 255. You can also do things like the quality of light, so it reads out like red, green, and blue on the light. And the final one is like these, uh, these little note sensors. It should say normal for all three of them because they're upright right now, but if someone were to tip over um, your materials, you can press it again then we can read it out again and we should see one of them is now inverted. So we can do live monitoring on our name tags at the conference, which is a ton of fun. Nice. How soon does the conference have this? How soon does the conference have this? Oh, wait, like it's a conference oh, yeah. badge? <laughs> you know, Mike and I used to go to uh, Def, DEF CON a lot and we love the badge life community. Uh, we hope that other conferences like this would bring that sort of thing in. Uh, but uh, we do not see that anytime soon at Embedded World, but uh, there's a lot of other great stuff to see 
and get at Embedded World. So. But if you're looking to try out devices like this, you can go to Galact.io. We have a dev tier that has the first 50 devices without paying anything, so you can play around with it, get your own stuff talking to the cloud and back, and uh, we're always available to chat about it. Yeah, this is actually an Adafruit uh, dev board, so this is a $35 dev board from Adafruit. It's got e-ink and sensors and ESP32. We use it for um, for training as well, so if you go to training.goliath.io, you can try out Goliath and follow along with tutorials and Zephyr. And uh, what's your discussions happening here at the Embedded World? What uh, are people talking to you about? Yeah, I think a huge number of people are looking for over-the-air update for their devices. So when you have things that are out in the field and you can't get to them, you need a way to update the software, and we specialize in that. Uh, the other thing is a ton of people see that um, Google's technology called Matter is coming next year, and Matter is built on top of uh, thread is a transportation layer. Uh, we also specialize in doing thread communications. That's what these uh, red devices are talking on the thread platform. So we've heard a ton of people asking about that as well. What is the matter? What, what is the matter? What is the matter? <laughs> oh, there's a lot of things that matter in these days. Uh, matter is uh, is a software uh, it's a software layer from the CSA, formerly the Zigbee Alliance. And uh, basically, that's going to allow interoperability in the smart home. So if you had like a Google light switch and an Apple light bulb, assuming Apple would ever make a light bulb, uh, in the past they weren't able to talk because they, the software management layer was different. In the uh, Once Matter comes out, basically those will be able to talk. The Google light switch will know how to talk to an Apple light bulb because of the software management layer, but those will all be built on top of other technologies like Wi-Fi or Thread or Ethernet, and basically it'll allow more interactivity, interoperability, that sort of thing. We're personally interested, I'm personally interested in the thread layer, uh, especially because you don't necessarily need that interoperability, but you could take thread and put it into an industrial market as well and have the meshing and the other uh, IPv6 characteristics of a thread node that then be passed all the way back up to the network and be controlled by Goliath. Do you know uh, Rudy from uh, Espresso? Yeah. Um, not Rudy, He's we know. Hi. Oh, Hello. hi Rudy. Hi Rudy. Yeah, how are you doing? All right. uh, we know Sprite we're from using, Espressive. We're using yeah. your stuff. Our, yeah. our smart lamp's running Espressive as well. It's That's right. Great yeah. technology. Yeah, we love Espressive. So there's a bunch of Espressive in the... Yeah, in the badges and also in the smart lamp. Um, these devices are running NRF uh, Nordic Semiconductor with an Ethernet, but I've actually prototyped them with Espresso and Wi-Fi because it's easy. One of the places that Zephyr really shines is that your C code is completely separate from the hardware that you've chosen, and so it kind of abstracts it away, makes it possible to like upgrade within the same chip family or even switch between vendors or switch between uh, manufacturers of uh, sensors.